The forerunner of the Essex Youth Orchestra, the Wiccan Chamber Orchestra, and a tour of Norway in the summer of 1959. And these maps are my first attempt at animated graphics. But our journey starts at King's Cross Station. The Centre Henry Cole Cello Judith Thomas Keyboard Helen Edwards, violin with parents. Eta Herbert and Diana Cummings, violins. And an amazing shot of a very young Douglas Cummings. And with the camera pointing at me, Brian Underwood, violin. and the third member of the Cummings family, Julian. And I believe this is John Sefton, cellist. Baggy Cope Stake, bass player with tongue out. Durham Cathedral. And finally, Newcastle. And pianist, Valerie Pardon. Nicholas Braithwaite and Peter Thomas. On the left, Ian Humphreys, our conductor. Pianist Maggie Cope Stake with boyfriend. She was playing bass on this trip. John Boyce, cellist. Our boat didn't have stabilizers and so it was quite a choppy crossing. And John Chambers, viola player, was definitely suffering. Our first sight of Oslo and the twin towers of the City Hall. Now we're meeting our first set of hosts as we were farmed out to families on the whole tour. This is where I was staying, and I remember that the young lady on the left in the grey was Ava. Before rehearsals and concerts begin, we have time for a little sightseeing. Here we are assembling for our first rehearsal and concert and time for a little photo shoot with Eta Herbert and a soldier.
I remember this to be a very celebrated sculpture called the monolith. More pictures of other members of Ava's family. And on our little touristic trips, it wasn't long before we bumped into other members of the orchestra. Time to leave Oslo and head north via Trondheim to the Lofoten Islands and Svolver. and back on the boat again as we travel around the islands, giving concerts in many small towns. On the right of the picture in the blue is Graham Snelling, viola. In the light colored jacket, Henry Cole, cellist. Alan Gold, clarinet. Lifting Graham Snelling, viola player, was a risky business. But any wild behaviour on behalf of the musicians was soon forgiven when the wind group entertained other passengers. Once we had arrived at a destination, it was a question of being farmed out to the local people for accommodation. I do believe that John Underwood and I stayed in this house. The gentleman approaching is Crawford Massey violin. Our last destination on the Lofoten Islands was the larger town of Harstad. Ruth Bennett behind, cellist with Valerie Pardon and conductor Ian Humphrey. On leaving Harstad, there was an incident. A young girl who was sad to see us go was standing very close to the edge, and when we shouted humorously, jump, to our amazement and shock and horror, she did. This was very unwise of her and alarming for everybody, as the amount of folk who could actually swim at that time in the north of Norway was very limited. Fortunately, all turned out well as she was rescued. 
Uh, we did decide not to make any stupid challenges again. And now on to the most northerly point of our tour, Tromsø. Being well above the Arctic Circle, this boat ride afforded us wonderful northern views. Helen Edwards' violin enjoying a banana. And standing beside Alan Gold on the steps is another violinist, Prunella Sedgwick. And yet more violinists, Isabel Danks and Eta Herbert. The slow and studied walk of Henry Cole, cellist. And of course me with Helen. Violinist Brian Brown talking to a local. And here is some footage of our conductor, Ian Humphreys, enjoying some local delicacy. And on arriving at this most northerly destination, we are once again farmed out to families. It would appear that John Underwood and I are billeted at the same address again. Unfortunately, the host's idea of a little sightseeing trip didn't go too well. Standing on the left is John Chambers, viola player. The difficult coastline around the fjords meant that roads often simply stopped and the journey had to be continued on ferries. Waving his arms and wearing glasses, Peter Thomas, violinist. In the brightly coloured jumper, Diana Cummings, violinist. Travelling south, but I can't discern the name of this town. We were obviously taking this departure very seriously. This was a longish coach trip to Narvik. But at that time, before bridges, all road trips entailed many ferry crossings. And hugging Diana Cummings is Nicholas Braithwaite, then trombonist to become a conductor.
On the move again, and this time retracing our steps to Buddha. And yet more ferries. I had time for a few shots of Buddha. Down to Trondheim. A brief shot of my host's daughter. Before taking the boat, we obviously had time in Oslo to do a little sightseeing. Here is the monolith in Vigeland Park. And so once more on board Bremer of the Fred Olsen lines. What I remember of this voyage was that although it started calm and fair, it became very choppy and on these boats without stabilizers, everyone felt it. <laughs> <laughs> 